What's up, everybody? It's your boy Melvin here for another classic review, and today I'm reviewing another episode of Tales from the Crypt. This time, an episode from Season 5, the first one, called Death of Some Salesman. And this is an episode I like because it only needs three people in. Well, four. It stars Ann Berkeley Jr., Tim Curry, Calf Weeks, and Yvonne DeCarlo, but I'll explain why. But before we begin, did you subscribe? Did you hit the bell? If so, I got this product if you're interested in if it's 100% working. If I recall, this is how you call showsmanship. And yeah, Death of Some Salesman was from the issue of, ha of The Haunted Fear from issue 15, and oh boy, this is an episode I actually like because this, <laughs> this actually proves how Tim Curry is a great actor from, the, from this one episode. You'll see why. So we get the, you know, the usual opening plot. Uh, the Creep Keeper, this time, he's pretending to be this, you know, one of back before we had the internet, Amazon, that we had this, like, the shopping channel. Yeah, that's what the Creep Keeper was doing. It's a shopping network, it's the shopping network. What do you quote? Well, kitties, I'm afraid our designer hanger offer has expired. Would somebody please get Mr... De la renta. Out of here. Next up on the Home Chopping Network, it's time for the Crypt Keeper's Fashion Boutique. Today we're featuring my full line of Apris by Death Care products. We got everything from face cream to mascara. Try some. It's the best thing you can do for dim eyes. Or maybe I could interest you in tonight's special. It's a tasteless tidbit about a traveling cemetery plot salesman who is about to make a grave mistake. I call it Death of Some Salesman. When we get the opening thought, the scream, and looks like... Yeah, it looks like a weirder than to a porno scene from the 90s. I'm not joking. He's like he's, ba he's banging a waitress named Stella. After waking up next morning, he checks his obituary section as usual. Stella wakes up, and to argue as Judd had conned her into believing he loved her, which it would rescue her from a crummy life. But of course, he's a shithead. Literally a scummy shithead. He admits it was a promise he only made the previous night. But warranty expired this morning. He calls it his gaming salesmanship in Leaser. What a pig. I feel bad for her. <laughs> Judd, a so-called traveling cemetery plot salesman. Yeah. Remember the night when people offer you like weird insurances? Hey, we got a plot for you. News alert, it's not. Which he visited the home of Miss Jones. Which, fun fact, is played by none other than Yvonne DiCarlo. If you don't remember her, she's more famous for famously known as playing Lily Monster in The Monsters. Hey, I did not believe she accepted the role of playing the, no offense, the country bumpkin, widower. They gave up the money to this scumbag. But yeah. After conning her out of her fortune because of a, you know, okay, the real okay, just a scumbag. He just look up in the the uh, you know the obituary section of the newspaper and say who died. So he's looking for opportunity, prey, suckers to buy his so-called plots. I'm not joking. I'm not joking at all. This guy's a total pig. Oink oink. Uh. But yeah, after that, oh boy, soon 
after and guess how much he actually managed to get her cuff up 10 grand which is a lot of moolah back in those days who boy i tell you what i feel bad for her i tell you shit so our next guinea well our next one is another couple which i recall Which we meet. The next house Jeff visit is the Come Fire residence where Mrs. Ma Brackett, wait for it, played by Tim Curry, answers the door and says nobody by the name of Come Fire lives here. Realizing he mixed the address up, Judd apparently, but Ma invites him over, realizing he's a salesman. He pitches his cemetery plot to Ma, who summons the Grizzled Pog Brackett. Also played by Tim Curry, which <laughs> I've seen this episode. You see those two right neck face to face, like how the hell they did this effect? But wait, there's more. Of course, Pop Racket get into the room. Pop takes Glee in having a salesman over, claiming nobody goes door by to door anymore, and most would rather shop on the TV. Jock coaxes them into the special benefit package, which, of course, he's going to put, like, 40 grand for the price of 750 in cash on the spot. Brackets fall for it, but Paul wants to see the land before buying. Judd agrees to take them to tomorrow morning. Paul goes to get the money as Ma fixes Judd a cup of coffee. After Paul calls Ma out of the kitchen, Judd goes to the microwave to warm his cup. And guess what he finds inside? A severed head. He screams, falls backwards, pulling back a curtain hiding another corpse with a vacuum nozzle. Through his jaw, a terrified judge tries to escape, but guess what happens? Paul appears behind him and beats him unconscious with a baseball bat. Bang! That night, Ma and Paul argue over what to do with the handcuffed Judd as slowly starts to wake up. Paul wants to kill him quickly, but Ma wants Weona, their daughter, to have a look at him. Wait for it. Claiming nobody will ever want her, they tell Judd the corpses are just like you. Salesmen who have already succeeded in selling them crummy microwave and vacuum cleaner. He then, and also one, the show like color TV, which was in a color. Now it is with the corpse of the the, the the damn TV salesman inside of it. Now it's color. Soon, trying to get, trying to con people out of their hard-earned money. Mod stops him and by insisting we all should see him first. Which smelly, the smelly, frequently. Meantime, while he's alone, that's when Weona walks down. You won't guess who's playing her. From the description, the smelly, frictionally hideously bracket daughter comes downstairs, and guess who it is? Tim Curry, once again. He's not playing by one, but two women. And oh boy. This is so amusing. Tim Curry's not only playing but not one, not two, but three characters in the same episode, right there. And it's quite amusing, actually. I tell you what. And when Bra when Campbell hears her, he explains that he's a... He, okay, he's a funny thing. He hasn't seen her yet, and she's right behind him talking to him. Which, of course, he wants to get a good look at her until... whoops he do He gets to get one look at her. He ugly. Uh, she ugly. And remember, Bragg is... And Judd's not the type, so guess what he does? Oh boy. He starts to get into business, like literary business. Well, unconvinced at first, he she eventually takes him up to the room to see if the body never lies. As in She she he's tied up. He has his hands bound. And his I don't know if his legs are bound. And guess what? She just took his pants off and looked at his junk. Like she was like I don't think you don't love me. I'll just give you to my dad. 
and oh, so he said, wait, wait. He's trying to think the most sexiest, attractive thoughts he can think of to get that Woody standing up, and it actually did. And by the looks of that face, he say, oh my god, you do love me. And guess what she does? She takes off her underwear. Remember, this is Tim Curry, so he's keeping the dress on. Gets on top and sits on it, and you see the look on her face, like... <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't describe it. It's too funny. <laughs> this, is <Patrice> just <laughs> this ain't the first time Tim Curry dresses a woman. We see Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> <laughs> and they actually do it. You see those two are just doing the deed. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> sorry, I couldn't stop laughing. This actually made me laugh. After they made the deal, Joe Lies claims that that was the best sex he ever had. If you're that drunk, you gotta be that damn stupid. And of course, he tried to convince her. She guess what? Because of her love him, she wants to marry him and run away with Judd, whose interest is, is sparked once he learns she receives. 50 grand dowry money stolen from the dead salesman once married and its corresponding paperwork is buried in the basement. Soon, Palma agreed to, mar to the marriage. Pa presided over it as the reverend, as the preacher. The I do's are said and Judd puts Ma wedding ring on Weona. Pa, however, refuses to unlock the handcuffs due to his distrust of a salesman. A fierce Fiona attacks her parents by trying to ruin the, her happiness. He beats both of them to the ground. And this is a funny thing. You see all three of them in the same room. And they're played by one person. One person. I don't know what thing was that. I, remember, I can't remember the, the technical effect they did, like they record one person and then they had to dress up again and another scene there, once upon all three there, there, you got three Tim Curry's but yeah how they did that effect it was pretty good in H well, but mm, you know why but of course, but instead of accepting the dowry of course it's what Judd did after he went out to un uncuffed him, that's what he does. Joe immediately shoots Weona with Paul's shotgun. He digs through the basement and finds a box, but instead of the money, he finds a death certificate with his name on it. He's surprised by Mom and Pa, who hold him, at, hold him at gunpoint and called the hole just a... He dug a nice cemetery plot. Weona suddenly rises up, wondering <sighs> how she get the fake blood out of her dress. Ma suggests that using the washing machine sold by them by another salesman. A stylish salesman realized the family had conned him, but Pa calls his eyes and told him, Nope, I call it salesmanship. Bang. Judd is dead. He has made a new hole in his grave. Soon, we back with the creep keeper saying, Good old Judd, just another satisfied ghost immer. I guess it's true what they say. The family that slays together stays together. We come now to one of my favorite items. An amazing creep keeper sash slash omatic. It's more than just a knife. It peels, it it cuts, makes fabulous French fries. It slices, it dice, it <coughs> Oh If you don't if you wonder why I said oh he severed his finger with a knife. And that was it. And that was Death of Some Salesman. And oh boy, this is an episode that made me laugh. 
It made me laugh, laugh, laugh because it's Tim Curry's performance as the three bracket families members right there. Ma bracket, Paul bracket, and we on a bracket. Which damn that's why I call good acting right there. But yeah. <laughs> And this came out in, in October 2nd of 93, so shit. Itch, and this is issue number 15 of Haunted Fear. I gotta check it out. Because I do have the Haunted Fear Volume 1 and 2, but I don't know if it's actually in there. But let's see when it, the Volume 3 comes out. I'll check it out if it has that. But yeah. Let me know what you think of Death of Some Salesman. Did you like it? If you're a fan of Tim Curry from his earlier films, like, you know, like Clue and other films. Even Home Alone 2, because face it, how stupid can you be to fall for a, pr a gag from the kid pretending to be a gangster? That old shower gag scene with the machine gun. <laughs> but yeah, let me know what you think of the episode, what was your first scene, and don't tell me it was the damn sex scene when he's faking love with... <clears throat> because that would be too funny and too weird at the same time. But yeah, this character really only had three people... Well, four. If you count the waitress in the beginning, you got Ivan De Carlo playing the unfortunate soul, giving her money to this scumbag who deserves what he gets. Apply the grave under the basement. But yeah, let me know what you think of the episode and in the comments down below. And if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe, hit the bell, like the video, and I'll see you next time. Peace.